Here's a nice simple function. Add1 takes an int and returns an int. There's nothing confusing here. Of course, we can write functions that accept and return any of a variety of types, including doubles, cares, and lists. This is true in almost all programming languages, but functional languages take it a step further. We can accept and return other functions. Languages where functions are values that can be passed around like this are said to have first-class functions. Here's a function that takes a function as an argument. f ignores its argument and always returns 3. Here's a function that returns a function. g also ignores its argument and returns the function add1 that we defined earlier. These two functions aren't terribly useful, but they serve as simple examples of higher-order functions, that is, functions that accept or return other functions. A much handier higher-order function is map. Map takes a function and a list. It returns a list made by applying the function to each element of the old list. We could have defined a function to do this work. Map makes this much easier by separating the processing of the list from the action being performed on each element. By capturing a common pattern of computation, Map lets us avoid a lot of redundant code. We don't need to define separate functions for triple each, square each, and so on. Now, consider this function. So far, we have imagined that this function takes two ints and returns a third one, but that's not really what's going on. Take a look at the type signature. If the arrow associates from left to right, then h has the same type as f. If the arrow associates from right to left, then h has the same type as g. It must be one of the two. It turns out that it's the second one. h takes an int and returns a function that in turn takes an int and returns an int. Now wait a minute. We know that this function is perfectly happy to take two ints. What's going on? Again, think about associativity. This is the same as either h of 3 of 4 or h of 3 of 4. Asking for 3 of 4 in the second case doesn't make any sense, so it must be the first one. We take h of 3, which returns a function, and apply it to 4. So, what function is returned when we ask for h of 3? We get an error message, but Haskell is not telling us that taking h of 3 is illegal. Haskell is just saying that it doesn't know how to print the resulting value, which is a function of type int to int. We can store this value in a variable. Now we have a function that we can apply to a number. The function hmm, then, adds 3 to its argument. It is the result of partially applying the function h. Any Haskell function that appears to take multiple arguments can be partially applied this way. Here we partially applied max to get a function that returns the max of 3 and its argument. We then mapped that function, which has no name, over a list. In fact, every Haskell function takes one argument and returns one value. If it appears otherwise, it's because applying the function really involves creating a series of functions and applying each one to the next value. The type here could be written as sum3 takes an int and returns a function. That function takes an int and returns another function. That function takes an int and returns an int. When we ask for... We're really asking for...
Haskell allows us to leave out the implied parentheses in both the type signature and the function application. Functions that are broken down like this are said to be curried after Haskell curry. Currying is possible in all functional languages. In Haskell, all functions are automatically curried. Infix operators are also curried. Conveniently, we can supply either of the two arguments. Map is built in, but it could be defined like this. Strictly speaking, because it is curried, map takes a function from A to B and returns a function from a list of A's to a list of B's. Most of the time it's easier to imagine that it takes two arguments, a function and a list, and returns a list. We'll often talk about functions as if they take multiple arguments. Just remember that we could partially apply them if we really wanted to. Now, suppose we have two lists that we want to combine with some function. The higher order function zip with makes this a snap. To get a function that's just like an existing one, but with the arguments in the opposite order, use flip. This says that from is the result of flipping the subtraction operator. Filter takes a function and a list and gives us a list of those elements for which the function returns true. Finally, take while takes a function and a list, which might be infinite, and returns the beginning of the list, stopping when it finds something that doesn't satisfy the function. Higher order functions are enormously powerful. In the next video, we'll look at some more advanced techniques.